you hear it with a lot of different natural resource issues. Mother Nature, you know, will, will reign supreme in the end at some point. And I think that, that's true with wildfire. Uh, we've got a lot of fuels in the forest. There's lots of lightning. Fire is gonna happen. So our, our uh, intent is to try to have it on our terms when we would like it, where we can control the smoke as much as possible. Uh, prescribed fire is emulating what the natural fire process that would be on the landscape. Um, and the landscape has evolved um, and developed with fire on it. And so if you remove that key component of the process, um, then you essentially remove one of the building blocks of the ecosystem. Uh, it'd be no different than if you were to remove, let's say, moisture or the soil. You know, um, you're removing one of the components that all of those plants and all of the animals that you know rely on that habitat have evolved with. Yeah, so last summer there were a lot of wildfires burning through the Pacific Northwest and we had a fire, same time frame as a lot of the other fires. So we had a type two team here managing the fire and it, it for a bit appeared as if it could be on the landscape all summer into the fall, putting smoke into the basin uh, all summer long and um, would have burned about 20 to 30,000 acres all the way up to the north entrance road in the park. It's really scenic right now with green, uh, lush forest that people like to, to view. And we just happened to be lucky that we had some really good areas where we got rid of all the fuels, uh, small trees and brush, uh, where it was burning towards. So it allowed us to use those treatments and showcase their, uh, their value. And uh, uh, when the fire got there, we were able to get control of it very quickly because there wasn't a lot of stuff for it to burn uh, in, a, in a high, high severity manner. So it really showed that these treatments really uh, give us a lot of uh, options. It takes all the tools in the toolbox. Um, we do need to cut trees, we do need to cut brush, but that's not going to solve the problem. And that's really what the Timber Crater Six Fire showed us, and, and others around the region have seen this, is we need uh, treatments where we remove the fuels, and we also need to get fire on the landscape, because that's really what, what puts the landscape in a condition where the fire behavior is drastically different, and we can control it and not be so reactive. We had firefighters from all over the nation here for a couple weeks helping us uh, get control of that fire and constantly heard a message from firefighters from all over that the treatments were, um, were very useful in controlling the fire and if they had this type of uh, uh, treatments in er other areas that went, we, they would have a lot easier of a job, they'd be safer and we'd probably have a lot less smoke. Uh, fire is the natural disturbance uh, mechanism for Ponders of Pine ecosystem and that's it's fire dependent and we've kept fire out for so long. We're really concerned in this area that's one of the largest blocks of old growth Ponders of Pine on our, on our district. So some of those are probably 250 to 500 years old, the larger ones. And it's very important for specific wildlife, uh, especially the white-headed woodpecker. There's been a lot of uh, resource studies out there studying the white-headed woodpecker and its habitat. And it really depends on those large trees and snags um, and downwood for their for their livelihood too. So, over here is an area that we um, implemented prescribed fire four months ago, and then over here on this side we have an area that has not received any type of treatment. And uh, as you can notice, with the prescribed fire side, you know we are reducing the amount of fuel and dead vegetation that's um, on the ground. These are kind of some of the um, objectives that we're trying to achieve when we do prescribe fire, is we're trying to reduce the vulnerability of the canopy to uh, crown fire, and we do that by reducing some of the ladder fuels. And so that kind of starts off with, you know, reducing the amount of, um, of fuel loading that's on the ground, which then kind of we move up to um, the smaller trees, and we can, you know, kind of limb up some of the lower branches and the lower foliage on the smaller trees. And then that can help these larger trees that are sometimes have these smaller trees under the drip line and really keep them more resilient and better protected from, you know, um, fires that were to return here, um, whether it's a prescribed fire or a wildfire. I have not found a better way to manage a land or anything natural other than the way that nature would do it. And, you know, that's one of the first processes that was here was, you know, the fire process on this western landscape. And I don't know that we can be successful if we ignore that process as a significant effect um, that promotes um, growth and sustainability and health and vitality amongst these plants and organisms.